Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got a really interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the Hawk shortcut. Now, for those of you who are watching this on the day that I uploaded it, October 23rd, you're in luck because tonight at 6 p.m. Mountain Time, uh, there's going to be a batch of these released. And I did try to time this video so that uh, people who want this can actually get their hands on it. I don't always have that opportunity. and I know people you know, complain sometimes. So yeah, if you're watching this on the day that I upload it, you can actually get your hands on a, uh, a super nice, authentic hawk piece. Now, this is obviously a very, very fancy utility knife, right? And the obvious statement is you can buy a utility knife for five bucks. Why would you spend so much money on that? I can promise you that every single person who's actually interested in buying this knows exactly what they're buying. This is 100% for people who are hardcore at knife enthusiasts and people who are very much interested in hawk knives. I mean, if you're aware of hawk knives, you know about the deadlock, right? You know about, you know, basically why hawk knives are so special. Um, and this knife has a lot of really interesting elements. So while it absolutely does do the exact same thing as a $5 box cutter, I'm going to quote Nick Shabazz and say, you are aggressively missing the point here if uh, you have to... You, you're, you, you know, if you have to do cartwheels to, you know, leave that type of statement. Um, yeah, it, it is what it is. Um, but oh my goodness, is it cool. Uh, I've got a lot of things to say about it. Thanks so much to Hawk Knives for providing this knife for review. Thanks to my patrons. Actually, I bought this. This is mine. <laughs> Thanks to me for buying it and then sharing it with you guys. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Um, this will take, you know, your, all the different uh, basic types of razor blades. So while it has this one, you know, this, this serrated version installed, uh, it will take, you know, all of the, the same ones that we see day in and day out. So let's go ahead and measure this. And by the way, this information will all be linked down in the description so you guys know where to go. Overall length of the shortcut is coming in at, we're going to say six and a quarter, uh, blade length. I mean, you know, you can't really count anything that's not blade. So if you want to count to the frame, it's two and a half inches. But if we're being realistic here, the blade length of the razor is about two and an eighth. And that's also the cutting edge. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons. So any um, custom scales you can find down in Original Goat, uh, down in the description under Original Goat or Fly Titanium. So up against the Demco and Cold Steel 8010 and the Demco 80 20.5. You can see it's a it's a little guy, right? It's a small knife. It's got a big personality, but it's it's a small knife. How about up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3? There we go. Uh, Para 3 definitely still, you know, quite a bit larger, even though the Para 3 is on the smaller side. And then last but not least, let's put it up against the Dem uh, Benchmade Group Tillinger, in this case, the Ritter Hogue and the Hogue Deca. Obviously, hawk knives are made in the United States and not, you know, not the same way that like a ZT is made in the United States or like a Kershaw, like a USA Kershaw. These are small batch and very, very labor intensive, right? This is a small company, small batch, 100% um, made in the United States. So this is real deal, um, not mass production or anything like that. Um, and that's part of the reason why they're going to cost so much. So, you know, again, it's going to be really hard for people to get around the fact that it, it is, you know, in its base form, a simple box cutter, right? I, and, you know, you get that, you know, on a certain level, it's, it's kind of hard to get around that. But the reason it costs so much money is not limited to what it's capable of. It's it has to do with what it takes to create it. Not just the materials, but we're looking at all of the machine work and everything that's involved with this and then doing all of that small batch in-house in the United States when you are one or perhaps just a few people. I honestly don't know if Hawk has a staff. I mean, it's a father and son team, right? So yeah, that's going to cost a lot of money, whether people like it or not, whether people understand it or not. This process proceeds either way, right? It just, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, let's talk about the action. Wow, it's really cool. And it's also super different because of the locking system. So this is a flipper, right? And it does have a detent. <laughs> so you pull this nub back and it flips. But you can see here, 
what what's happening? This is to get a little spring in it, right? And these two nubs fall into this little area right here and lock out. And you can easily lift and manipulate this with one hand, making it, oh, one of the most interesting fidget factor knives. And it works really well. You cannot use this little area down here, by the way. Like that was one of the first things that I wanted to try to do. You have to use this sort of, I just, nicked myself there. You have to use this little Dr. Seuss nub up here. But it does work really well and the action is very snappy and very satisfying. Every time I've had this knife in, you know, a group of people that I, I thought might appreciate knives, like everybody was just fascinated by it. Uh, that's one of the cool things about this is that it's, it's obviously overkill. It's obviously overdone intentionally, right? The world doesn't need this to proceed, but that's not the point. The point is, wow, look at this. This is wild, you know? Um, so, and of course you gain the, you know, the, the, the basic utility of replacing the, the razor blade whenever it goes dull, right? And then you get to keep the, the frame obviously does, the wear and tear is just limited to surface wear and tear, as long as you're not being crazy with it. But anyways, manipulation of this <laughs> very interesting hawk locking mechanism is awesome. On top of that, it is absolutely solid. If you think about this, the way that this locks into place right here, because this is almost hooked over. So once it snaps into place, I'm just trying to demonstrate it, you can put as much pressure on that spine as you want. That is not going to disengage. I really can crank on this thing. Not that you would, but you don't have to worry about it. The only way that lock is going to disengage is if you intentionally lift that bar out of that, you know, little tucked away sort of garaged frame area and then put the blade away, right? That is the only way. And you're obviously not going to be putting any you know, side to side force on this because why? You're gonna pry with a razor blade? You gotta be stupid. So you're not gonna do that. So the maximum amount of force you're ever gonna apply to it would be on the spine with your finger. And you can you can go all day. You, you, it's not gonna disengage, right? So that's pretty cool. Um, it's just more interesting than anything else because I've, I've, you know, once again, you know, a hawk is doing something that I've never seen before. The action is extremely satisfying and extremely smooth and it will probably maintain that smoothness forever, right? You can obviously take apart um, this up here, which I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate just to show you guys. So we'll do that. But as far as the frame goes, I just wanted to point out there's not really any frame disassembly there. Um, so what you're looking at here, I believe, is a T8. And if we just turn that real quick, take that out here real quick. Sorry, just want to make sure we get that all the way out. That just slips out. That's what you're looking at. That is the only step. A lot of people want, you know, like a uh, one step kind of release, right? Where you just pull something back. Because obviously uh, on, you know, um, you're more, you know, we're going to like talk about the, the, the box cutters that you can get at Home Depot. You just pull something back and the, the razor comes out um, and then you can just replace it. Sorry. You got to get this filler tab back in there so that it holds everything in place. Yeah. It, it is uh, an additional finicky step versus, you know, a normal utilitarian box cutter. And once again, people will not be able to help pointing out that, um, you know, when we're talking about these things from a utilitarian standpoint, the cheaper stuff makes more sense. Y yeah, that, that's fine. You, again, you go just go buy that. Like we don't, we know, everybody here knows. <laughs> I know that people are not going to be able to help it. I, I know that like people cannot help. But like aggressively point that out. And here's the thing. No matter how much how much you do it, it, it doesn't matter. Because the, the, the answer for you is go to Home Depot and buy that thing and then love it. Just go do that, right? This is still these things are still gonna be here and there's still gonna be people interested because a lot of people who, you know, started with those things kind of climbed up the ladder and got tired of them. They still use them for regular utilitarian, you know, just day-to-day -day stuff. But um, there's certainly a bunch of those people, because we all kind of started in the place, same place, who appreciate stuff like this, not because they gain any utilitarian benefit over the, the inexpensive version, but because it's more interesting, because they appreciate additional elements here, right? So the one extra step for replacing the blade is not really that big of a deal. Um, but it does hold in place just fine. And in fact, I don't think I actually cranked it down completely. It's very, very easy to take that screw out, just keep the filler tab there while you're doing it, and then replace the blade. I really don't have much of an issue there. I'm using the wrong head. I want to make sure that I actually screw that all the way down. Is this a T9? Boy, is it a T10? Hold on a second. 
might actually be bigger than I thought. No, but the T9 will actually fit in there. So that's, I'm glad that I did that twice. I was going to say the T8 felt a little loosey-goosey. The T9 will absolutely fit. Just I would make sure that it's cranked down. You know, the rule with knives is you want to get the screws snug, but don't over tighten them because that, that will definitely create issues. But yeah, that's all that's involved there. That's really all you can do. Um, I'm sure that um, Hawk has some tool, you know, because this is proprietary, the pivot system, um, unless it comes with something. Mine did not, um, not that I know of, but uh, I don't believe you're going to be able to tighten that. I could be wrong. This is something you can talk with Hawk about, um, but I, mine didn't come with anything to my knowledge, so I'm going to assume that this is not meant to be taken apart. Moving on here. Um, we talked about the action, right? We spent a long time talking about the action and we, talk, we did the hardware check. Let's go ahead and measure. We don't need to measure the blade stock thickness. That's completely unnecessary. Um, I, I don't know why you would need to know that, right? It's, it's a razor blade. We'll weigh it real quick. So this is titanium and then whatever you choose for the razor blade. Um, you can buy premium razor blades if you really want to do that. Or you can just buy basic ones, right? It's completely up to you. You're already you know, paying for an object like this. So, you know, there's no, no harm in buying a premium razor blade or a pack of them if you want to. 2.26 ounces, so definitely not heavy. Um, let's go on. Let's move into the meat and potatoes. I love carrying this thing. And uh, this, is, this is something that does get carried. Um, I am um, really struggling because now I own two Hawk Deadlocks. And obviously one of them is a safe queen. The other one is currently still a safe queen, but I, I really want to carry it. But I, I you know, it, it, that is super expensive. And obviously this is too. But for some reason, I just don't have an issue carrying this. I'm not nearly as protective about this. In fact, I'm not protective of it really at all versus my deadlock, right? Even though it's made the same way, it's made with the same quality as, as the deadlock. It's just a different object. I love this pocket clip. Now this is like spring, this sort of spring pinch pocket clip that works really well. Um, this also is super lightweight. And so this is one of those things where it satisfies my desire to carry something really, really interesting. But at the same time, like um, we coach soccer this year for my daughter's team. And I always wanted to carry a, a pocket knife while I was up there doing that, right? Because I'm moving around on the field a lot, but I'm wearing athletic shorts. I'm not going to carry the 8010 um, while I'm in athletic shorts, right? And so, you know, it's sometimes I'll do like the DECA or something else lightweight. Um, but I, I like to carry, you know, from my perspective, something something really, really interesting, something that's fun. If I'm like sitting idly, you know, like while we're waiting for our food, if we go out to eat after the game or something, I kind of like to sit there and kind of mess with whatever's in my pocket. And that's, that's a very knife guy thing to do. So not everybody's going to understand that, and that's okay. But... Um, this has always just satisfied me um, so completely to have to carry this because it is so small and lightweight and it's such a simple object, right? But it's also incredibly complicated at the same time and it's just fun. My dad just lost his mind over this. You know, somebody who completely and totally understands, I mean, he owns a construction company, so he completely and totally understands the basic utility, the basic economic utility of, you know, just a regular utility knife. But and he knew that this was wildly expensive, but he just thought that this is like the coolest thing ever because it's a little flipper titanium utility knife that actually that locks out, right? The way that it operates and everything was just really interesting. Um, and it's fun. Um, and it, again, at base will perform the tasks that you would expect from a utility knife. Ergonomically, man, this thing is comfortable. It's just perfectly designed for your hand. This area right here has all been knocked down, this little choil area, and you can definitely get a full grip on it if you want to. You can absolutely do this. Now, most of the time, you're going to be holding it like this or like this, and it will work, right? It'll work just fine. It's very comfortable in a number of different areas. There are no sharp, or a number of different hand positions, there are no sharp edges on this at all, anywhere. Every edge has been knocked down and machined just perfectly. Obviously, the only sharp edge you're going to find is the razor blade itself. And that razor blade is definitely in there, by the way. It's not going anywhere. I mean, you'll break the blade before it actually comes free. So you, if you do need to, you know, break down a bunch of boxes or something, you really don't have much room to clear this part of the frame that holds it in place. But the same can be said about most utility knives anyway. So anything that I've really needed to cut, this is the type of object that always, you know, that proves to me on a, on a, whenever I carry it that... Day to day, it's very rare that I need a long blade, right? Like this is overkill. This is overkill. 
this is solving 99% of my problems. And when I carry a larger knife, this is just me, I carry it because I like it, not because I need it. Some people will need it. Some people will actually need more blade, you know, in their day to day, but not everybody. But this is my way of, you know, like carrying something smaller and lightweight and just kind of, I'm, I don't want to use the word minimal because it's obviously not minimal. But it'll, it'll do everything that I want it to do as far as like draw cuts and opening packages and things. But it, it scratches that like I want to carry something interesting itch, right? Man, it's fun to flip too. Really cool. Very easy and fun to manipulate as well. Um, carry profile. I don't think we did this. Thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. Yeah, it's thicker than you might expect, but not massively thick. This is the part that makes it super easy to carry. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. It's just a little teeny tiny object, right? It doesn't weigh very much. It's not long. It's not tall. It just is what it is. Substantial enough, though, that you don't feel like you're carrying something delicate. And I think that's a point that, you know, a lot of people would, would appreciate hearing. You might look at this and wonder, like, it's a lot of money, and I don't like putting a lot of money into things that feel delicate. Does that feel delicate? No. The only part of the thing that feels delicate is the razor blade, which is the replaceable part. The rest of the knife feels completely solid, unbelievably durable for such a small object. Um, I, you know, I don't think I've ever had so much faith in such a teeny tiny little object to, to, and it's not teeny tiny, but in such a small object, right? That's honestly what I think. So yeah, ergonomically, it's great. Um, as far as things like this go, um, the pocket clip is in just overly functional. I mean, this thing pinches to your pocket, right? It's There's tension pushing it down, but you can also release it with ease just by pulling back. It's so easy. So the in and out of the pocket experience is as simple as one-handed, lift it, and that's, that's going to rise over any pocket seam. Put it in your pocket, then release it. There's no way that's coming back out unless you are parkouring so hard that it releases from your pocket, right? No way to attach a lanyard, but you don't really need it. Um, not much of a self-defense <laughs> expert, but I'm going to go ahead and label this as not a self-defense knife. Not that that's a normal part of my reviews, right? Lockout is completely and totally solid, as you might expect from any Hawk uh, knife. If you're not familiar with Hawk, uh, Hawk knives, you know, when they make something, it's pretty intense. They, they invent a lot of really interesting locking systems. They're also the only company in the world who's managed to actually create a you know, consistently functioning OTF that locks out completely and totally solid, right? I know people like to say they're SOG, SOG whatever. Yeah, I've handled that thing. It's uh, it's pretty close, but it's also really loosey-goosey on the um, whether or not it actually manages to deploy. Uh, so it's not very reliable, and the system is 99%, but not completely and totally solid. The deadlock is the only completely and totally solid OTF. But the deadlock is... Much more expensive because it's, again, in-house USA custom. So their locking systems, what I'm saying is they're hardcore. They're, they're going to lock up. They're going to be completely and totally solid, despite being locks that we don't see on literally anything else, right? Um, they, they know what they're doing there. So very cool. Um, I'll let you guys look at some other elements of this because I'm kind of waving it around and not, um, you know, really getting any good close-ups here. But you can see how well everything is machined. Uh, I also really like the Hawk logo in the middle of it. That's what we're seeing here is the, the Hawk logo that's been uh, machined into the frame on the front and back. It's nice, deep texturing so you can feel it without it being sharp. Pocket clip is also machined just perfectly. Um, everything, every last little bit of this knife is just really cool. So do I recommend this? Well, no, it's obviously not for everybody. This is just for people who... Uh, have climbed the ladder to this point and are specifically interested in number one hawk knives and specifically interested in a really exotic utility knife because that's what this is. Nobody who is buying this is confused about what it is and what they're buying. They know what they're buying, right? So again, you can't avoid people complaining and why, why wouldn't you just go buy a utility knife at Home Depot? Yeah, you're missing the point, and you're aggressively missing the point, right? At this point, there's no way for you to you don't have to you don't have to buy it, right? But there's no way for people to just completely not get it, right? Uh, well, no, you can still not get it. That's fine. That's your that's your choice. But um, you know, it, it, what I'm saying is, is there doesn't need to be a, an argument, right? The people who are going to buy this are not being led astray. They know what they're doing, right? I think it's cool, and I bought one. 
<laughs> I wanted this, definitely. Um, so these are, they're still very expensive. I mean, it is a Hawk. It is a semi-custom that's made in-house in the United States, right? So again, you cannot limit the price just to the basic functionality just because there's a $5 object that does the same thing. That's not, we don't, that's not how we come up with the final price tag. It's the work involved, right? So these come in at 475 bucks. Woof, a lot of money. And I think he takes a $150 deposit for the pre-order tonight. Again, if you're watching this on October 23rd, 6 p.m. Mountain Time is when he opens this up. And I, the way he said it, he said he's going to close off the pre-orders once he hits a certain number. I'm guessing he knows what his capacity is, and he's just going to close it down once they reach capacity. What the capacity is, I have no idea. But that's what he's going to do. So if you want one of these, um, you can put in a pre-order deposit of 150 bucks, and then he'll charge you the rest when your order's ready. So for 475 bucks, do I think it's worth it? If you're a collector and enthusiast, right, and you're into hawk knives, absolutely. If you are not, if you're literally anybody else, well, no, no. Obviously, there's a million other things you could buy that will bring you more joy. You have to specifically be interested in this. But I am an enthusiast collector. I, I am somebody who's experienced Hawks work before, and I like stuff like this. So for me, this was an easy purchase. But, you know, it, depending on who you are, it's either a great purchase or not a great purchase, right? I mean, it just depends on your perspective. I like it. I think it's really cool. Um, it's definitely been done before. There are various, you know, uh, uh, sort of like over-the-top utility knives out there. This is probably one of the coolest, if not the coolest. Um, so, yeah, if you're into this stuff, you know, go for it. But if you're not, then, you know, it's just it, this exists, basically. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I, I did enjoy this. So thank you so much to Hawk Knives. You know, again, you didn't send this. I bought it. Um, but, um, yeah, really cool. All of the information will be linked down in the description. You guys can check it out if you want to. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at Metal underscore Complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.